We're talking about Jesus. What else? He's the one that we're here to talk about. Who is this man? And we see an example that Jesus displays of the power of gratitude on this Thanksgiving week. We don't want this to be just a once a year focus, but we can press into it, understanding that these principles are year round opportunities for us to glean. Jesus gives us the example, showing us the power of gratitude. I'm thankful today for grandkids. They keep me young. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday we had two of them, Judah and Izzy. Their parents were at a wedding that was kind of an all day affair. And Judah's 12, Izzy 10. Kathy planned an outing with Izzy to take her to the nail shop for manicure, pedicure. She loved it. And it's a pretty involved, takes a while kind of a thing. So I said to Judah, what, what do we do? Uh, Manny Petty, I've never had one. Uh, not that, you know, I know guys who do. I just never have. And I don't have an attitude about it. He's never done it. So like, Judah, what do you want to do? And his idea was, let's go roller skating. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, I thought, I'm kind of leaning into trying a Manny Petty. But <laughs> I thought, well, that's what he wants to do. Let's do it. There's a roller skating rink right down the street from the church here on Bradshaw. We went there and they had a 2.30 to 5 session. You get a stamp and they stamp five. I'm still trying. It was like a tattoo. I've been scrubbing on my hand ever since trying to get that 5 p.m. deadline off my hand. It's been a couple days since I've been on roller skates. <laughs> and, uh, it's, if they ever tell you it's like riding a bike, they're lying. <laughs> roller skates is totally different than bike riding. And I used to, like we would take youth groups to the roller rink. Uh, those were fun things to do back in the day. And young people particularly like it because they may get a couple skate. <laughs> and you never know what happens when, they... in fact, I had a, one of our members tell me that he met his wife in a singles outreach, a singles event at the, this very same skating rink down the street, met his wife doing a couple skate. So there... It's proven my point. So Judah and I put on skates and, man, stood up on those things. You're on carpet at first, you know, where you put them on. And I thought maybe it'll be better when I get to the floor. And actually, it was safer on the carpet. You have a little stickiness to that. On the floor, it's just slick. And, we're, and there was a lot of people there. I was hoping that people didn't know me. I had a hat on. Kind of dressed down a sweatshirt, and then it dawned on me. The sweatshirt I was wearing said capital all across the front. Like, oh, shoot. I could have been a little more subtle. And I don't know that anybody did know me. because I, I like to at least appear smooth, you know? Like, I don't want to look like I'm about to lose it and fall. And I didn't want anyone to see me fall. And I've, I've had falls before where I've got, you know, head trauma from it, not roller skating, but at my house. And it was a sketchy event, but we, we got through it. And it actually turned out to be a lot of fun for Judah and I. We enjoyed it and we enjoyed each other. And it was a special moment. I'm, I'm thankful for grandkids today. We went from there to GameStop to look for video games and Target for his birthday. We hadn't had a chance to actually give him a gift for his birthday. So we did that. We got home and thinking, you know, maybe we'll chill and he'll do some video games, but he wanted to play hockey in our house. Like we had these plastic hockey sticks and we're in the den. The, the girls weren't home, Kathy wasn't there, so we thought we could get away with it. You know, we, we might break something, but we won't tell. And we had just a great time and Kathy and Izzy had a great time, Jude and I did, and. It caused me today on this Thanksgiving focus to say, I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for my grandkids and for them keeping me young. It's a really good thing. Jesus shows us the power of Thanksgiving and gratitude in Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 32. This is a second story of feeding multitudes. Jesus has fed the 5,000 in one separate incident. Here's a feeding of 4,000. 
Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? They said, seven and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish. And having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. It's easy to lose the words in that sentence that are meaningful to our focus today. Let's look at it again in verse 36. He took the seven loaves and the fish and having given thanks, he gave thanks first. Then what happened? He broke them and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. He gave thanks. What happened then? Multiplication. There's something about the power of gratitude. When we give thanks, God can take what we put in his hands and do something with it that's very grand. The opposite is if we have a grumbling, complaining heart. What if it's like, hey, we got all these people and we got no food. What's up with that? Come on, disciples, what's your problem? Why didn't you prepare for this? Instead, Jesus has always a thankful heart. He's connected to the Father. Of course, he can do things no one else can. At the same time, he's showing us the example of the spirit that God the Father honors, the spirit of thanksgiving. In John chapter 11, another example of Jesus' gratitude quite a desperate situation. He has a friend who has died, Lazarus. Lazarus' family and friends were desolate. They, they were grieving and despondent. And Jesus goes with them to the gravesite, to the tomb. And in this moment, his heart is moved. Verse 41, so they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Once again, he starts his statements with gratitude. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth, Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. What a crazy story. Jesus brought a man back from the dead. It's on the heels of giving thanks. Father, thank you that you hear me. When we have a thankful heart, things can come back to life around us. There's miracles that are about to happen if we maintain gratitude that, Father, you hear me. Often we are saying things different than that. God, how come you're not hearing me? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you listening to me? Jesus models the gratitude that we could all walk in when we talk to God. Father, thank you that you hear me, that you're there for me. Sometimes it's challenging, but we work through our challenges to the reality that he's with us. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 16. Here's a word from the apostle Paul just to us on how we should live. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I think I'd like to read that again just so we could catch it, hopefully a little deeper in our hearts. Rejoice when always, pray without ceasing. Sometimes we wonder how do we do that. One of the things I've learned as a mentor friend that I have in small group I'm a part of, and he's talked about how even our conversations are prayers. Jesus is with us. We sang about the Holy Spirit being in this room, being in our hearts. We can sense him. Our heart can pound even when we feel like, man, I feel his presence right now. The reality is he's always with us, and when he's always with us, he hears our 
conversations. In that sense, we can be praying all the time, realizing he's with me, and our thoughts become prayers as we continue on the journey. I like to think of him as always with me, and he's hearing me all through the day. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in, not for. There's lots of things that happen I'm not happy about. I'm not grateful for those bad things that happened to me. But in the midst of the problem I'm in, I can still give thanks to God. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You want to be in the will of God? We're always looking for, how do you know God's will? Well, some of it we just need to say yes to what he's already said. We're in the will of God when we maintain a thankful heart. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you. You're right in the center of his will when you grow in that spirit of thanksgiving. The power of thank you is limitless. That's what Jesus' example is saying to me today. The power of thank you is limitless. It'll multiply small things that we have in our hands. When we're thankful, God will take the little we have and he will spread it out to make a great impact. He will take the things that seem to have died around us and breathe life back into them again. When we're thankful, he's about to do something grand. When we get a complaining spirit, we are not inviting a good response. We're actually inviting the enemy. When we have a negative spirit, we're buying right into the devil. That's him all day long. Major complainer. When we become that way, we are inviting negativity. We are inviting the darkness. We are inviting the wrong kind of activity into our life. When we're thankful, we're getting into the will of God and watching him do what amazing things he can do. Sometimes we have a poor me consciousness, like I'm a victim of everything. Poor me. Why is everybody against me? Why doesn't anybody like me? Why is this world so messed up around me? Jesus wants us to move out of that victim mentality into being victors, that he has accomplished the victory for us. And because of him, we can step out of the poor me into the blessed am I category and live in that realm. Rejoice always. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will. Want to get in the middle of God's will? Let's grow in our spirit of thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you helps us savor life and find beauty and truth. Thank you helps us discover our true nature, abilities, and talents. Thank you stokes the fire of creativity in us. Introduces us to higher levels of what we can accomplish. The thank you process motivates us to act because the appreciation that it produces gives us real power. It's a power that inspires. A thankful person inspires people around them. A power that rejoices more and complains less. A power that realizes our lives are dictated most of all by what thoughts we generate in our minds. It is out of our, it's out of our heart that we act as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. When we become real negative, we are inviting a lot of trouble. When we become real thankful and positive, we are releasing possibilities, and we're actually seeing things that we wouldn't be able to see otherwise. So my encouragement today is to me, rest assured, I'm not preaching at you today. I'm preaching at myself and inviting you along for the journey because I can easily get into a complaining mode. We've been through some of the most horrendous kinds of times that we were walking through, still are walking through great challenges, and man, I can get negative in a heartbeat. And thankfully, I have people around me that talk me back into a place of realizing the blessings of God are are available. They are yes and amen to those who believe. And I get back into the place of faith and don't stay wallowing around in my misery, uh, although I do that too much. So this is an encouragement to myself 
and in the process, an encouragement to you, what would it be like if we all stepped into this daily experience of rejoicing always, giving thanks in everything because we want to be right in the center of God's will? What kind of a house would we look like when we were walking in positivity, when we were walking in gratitude, and when we were expressing that to the people around us all day? And what kind of impact could we have in our community? Because we're not those complaining Christians. No, we're those life-giving, thankful for all, in every circumstance kind of people that are rejoicing all the time. And we're not giving anybody any trouble. We are actually giving them life. We're giving them hope by what is in us. Dr. Bob Emmons has been a friend of ours for some years. I learned of him as a professor at UC Davis And his whole life work has been on gratitude. He's written several books about the power of gratitude, how gratitude works is the title of one of his books. He helped me study these principles through his studies, and he's done scientific research on what happens. Dopamine is a chemical in the brain that gets released that's energizing, that's life-giving. And that gets released when someone is walking in positive thoughts and being thankful. He talks about gratitude releases a positive chemical in our system that gives us life. So they've concluded through scientific research, gratitude improves physical and mental health. Gratitude improves self-esteem. Gratitude enhances empathy and reduces negative emotions. Gratitude improves our quality of sleep. Gratitude makes people like us more. There's a side benefit. When we're grateful, doesn't that sound attractive? People are going to want to be around us if we're only complaining. Who wants to hang out in that realm? Gratitude strengthens our emotions. Gratitude leads us to a positive attitude. Gratitude enables us to be much happier in life. These are scientific realities to what happens when we become grateful. Some people seem to be wired to be grumpy. It's like, wake up in the morning and that's the go-to, just, oh, crud. And others seem to be wired with a different spirit. My dad was like that, always positive, never had a bad day. It, It was amazing and inspiring, and for me, at times, kind of annoying. (laughs) Because it's like, come on, can't you ever have a bad day? Everybody does. And he just refused to have a bad day. And it still does inspire me to be like that. And when you see the contrast, it's like much more desirable to be thinking in a positive vein than to be wired into grumpiness. (laughs) Sometimes you wonder, what comes first? Is that just the way somebody's made? Or is it possible that it's our practice, our practice and our habits hardwire us over time. It's possible to switch the wiring through a new practice. If we could begin to practice gratitude, we could rewire ourselves out of grumpiness as our go-to into having a positive outlook on life. There's some thoughts. I just want to finish with some practical suggestions on how we could rewire ourselves to follow Jesus. It's a spiritual principle. It's who Jesus is. A gratitude journal, this is something that's been often talked about in many circles. I've had one at various seasons. I haven't kept it continuously, but sometimes I get motivated. I have a journal I'll write gratitude notes in. It helps me. That might be something that you would think of. Maybe I could get a, a journal that's my gratitude journal, and every day, if you skip a day, don't worry about it. Just pick it up the next day and get into a habit of making notes of gratitude Thank you notes to others actually rewires us to be thinking about positive things. We start looking for things that other people do that we can thank them for. That gives us a spirit of gratitude for the things that people do around us. There's a book that I downloaded this week that I discovered Josie Robinson wrote that's called The Gratitude Jar, and I'm going to get to that in just a moment. In her book, she tells of a man, John Kralik, who used this principle of writing thank you notes and what it did for him. And she wrote some examples of the notes that he wrote. One was to his daughter when John said, my daughter, thank you for being cheerful and happy when I pick you up in the evening. 
Sometimes I don't have a very fun day, but when I see you and we talk about things and have fun, I feel better. Thank you for being the best daughter ever. Love, Dad. And he said, you know, I like to do it on handwritten notes. There's something about the sincerity of that when it's received, of what it does for the person reading it. It was an example of how it changed him by that action. He wrote one to a guy at Starbucks, the barista, went there often. He said, Scott, thank you for taking the time to greet me each morning in a friendly way. It is also so wonderful to me that you took the time to remember my name. In this day and age, few people make this effort, and fewer still do it in a way that feels sincere. You do both. It really makes a difference to me each day. All the best, John. And he left a note with the barista to say, you make a difference in my day. How many other notes has he written? Those are just a couple examples. We, you might think of that. Maybe you could start a practice of thinking of people. Now you start looking for it. That's another thing that happens. We can easily just go on our way and not pay attention to the beautiful things that are happening in our day that we just let them slip by. Instead, we get a spirit of thankfulness and gratitude. Now we're looking for it. Who can I connect to who's doing something kind and gracious that I can say something to, that I can write a note to, and it can become transformational? Thank you notes on social media. Here's the thought. Social media is such a dark hole in the day we're in. And now people saying all kinds of things about, you know, who's at fault? Is it Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg? Because, you know, he, they decide who to let some comments go and others not. And now people are like, what about my free speech? Look, it's a business. They're making money. They can do whatever they want. It's, you can still say what you want, just maybe not on Facebook. So it's up to, they have a right to decide that. It's their business. What would change the landscape? I, I promise they're not going to take off any comments on Facebook that are thank yous. When you're thanking people around you, when you're thanking your family, when you're thanking your friend, when you're thanking those who serve in your community. And if all of your social media comments were about thanking people, maybe we could actually transform social media into something that is life-giving instead of something that is so detrimental, something that's so demeaning. Now there's people, they, they're posting news stories that they've now become the source of news because you can't trust the media, but you can trust every post on social media. Like, really? It's so nonsensical. And now there's comments about all the things that people want you to know, what their opinion is about. What if all we wanted to do is just thank people? Take on the spirit of Jesus. What if we could attract people to our spirit of thanksgiving because it would attract people to Jesus? We could actually adopt a new way of transforming the world through social media if we made it all about saying thank you. Just a thought. Gratitude walks. Maybe you want to take a gratitude walk. I noticed our men's group had a hike yesterday. They do this once a month. I saw some pictures they posted. Beautiful hike not far from here, and about 30 went on it, and the opportunity for fellowship and for being grateful. You can take a walk on your own and look at the beauty of nature around you and thank God for it. What about gratitude through giving? We have going on while we're sitting here, a grocery giveaway, when I came back in to this service, I saw out the window cars lined up in our drive through and our members there giving groceries and turkeys. We had over 100 turkeys to give away today to all those driving through. We're going to do another turkey giveaway toward Christmas. You might want to donate to that. I did it yesterday. I went on to our site on Secure Give and to the, the food, cl food closet is the place to designate that gift so that we could give more turkeys away. Why? Because we're grateful for God's provision in our lives and what we can do to Bless somebody else. Giving is an act of gratitude. What about a gratitude jar? This was what caught my attention, and I just brought one as an example. A jar like this could be any kind of jar. Gratitude written across it. This is my gratitude jar. 
I saw this book that Josie Robinson wrote and she tells her story in summary of what this book is all about. Here's her comments. Practicing gratitude took me from being an overweight, closet drinking, hustling to pay my groceries, disenchanted housewife, to being fully sober after many years of failed attempts, losing 25 pounds, attracting my dream job, and becoming happy, content, and peaceful for perhaps the first time ever. Gratitude changes everything. It's amazing to me that you can actually see the incredible transformation that happened as a result of my gratitude practice. People keep telling me during my practice, I had this glow around me, but I didn't quite understand what they were talking about until I saw photos. Now I understand completely. The gratitude glow is totally a thing. She was looking at photos from before her practice and then those current. Usually after I give my talk, someone comes up to me and mentions how I don't even look like the same woman from the before photos. To which I reply, that's because I'm not. I transformed from the inside out once I changed my mindset from the gutter to grateful. Truly, it was like I got a makeover for my soul. Josie began her first 30-day gratitude jar experience with her four-year-old son each night. She had a counselor that gave her this idea. Why don't you try this? Do a gratitude jar for 30 days. See what happens in that 30 days. So she decided to start. The first night, she was putting her four-year-old to bed, laying on his bed with him. And she said, hey, what if we think about something we're grateful for? You want to do that? And he's like, you go first. So she talked about what she was grateful for, about her family in a short statement. And then she wrote it down. She had a Sharpie and some paper. She wrote it down, put it in a jar. And then she says to her son, how about you? And he started thinking about things that were just in front of him. I'm really thankful for my blanket. I'm really thankful for my Batman pajamas. It was deep. And she wrote those things down and put it in the jar. And they had a beautiful moment. She wasn't sure where that would go. That was night one. And when she woke up in the morning, her little boy, four years old, comes bounding into the room. And the first thing he said to her, hey, mom, can we do that gratitude thing again tonight? And she realized all of a sudden something happened for him that it touched him she's like yeah we can she couldn't wait till the night to lay down with him again and tell another thing she was grateful for and he another of what he was grateful for and they did this for 30 days straight and filled up a jar she would take paper just write on it put that piece of paper in and then they could go back after 30 days and even see the kinds of things they were grateful for and that 30-day practice she said transformed me entirely now it's something that can be done continuously, but that first effort was so impacting it set her free from the things that had bound her up. She ends her book with this prayer. Hey God, it's me again. What's new? So you really outdid yourself this time. I certainly didn't expect all this. Wow, thank you. That's how she ended her book about what happened in her experience of gratitude and how God transformed her life and she wanted to express her gratefulness to him for it. Amazing what can happen when we simply change our way, when we change our mentality, when we say, I'm gonna take a different approach. Gratitude gives us the power to heal, to be engaged, to be energized, and to change lives. It is the spirit of Jesus. That's the thing. Gratitude is the spirit of Jesus. That's why it's powerful. It's being like him. He's the one that we want to follow. Let me say again. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Father God, we trust you. Thank you today. We ask for your help that we could somehow grow in this. I want to grow. I want to find 
new practices that might help me and might help others. And I pray you'll give me that, that follow through. Give, give me the desire, not just sitting here, but tomorrow and the next day. Show me how and give me the strength. If you need his grace to cover sin, he's so faithful to that. Just pray for that. Jesus, I believe in you and I know I have sinned and I ask you to forgive me. Thank you for taking the penalty for me on the cross and for raising from the dead to overcome it. I believe in you and I want to follow you. And I ask for your help and your strength today to be a follower after you. In Jesus' name, amen.